Hello, everybody. Welcome to your video for lab number nine, kind of conservation of energy part two, but I'm calling this lab modified Atwood machine because that's sort of the system that we're using. A modified Atwood machine is basically a mass, in this case, the cart, on a level frictionless surface. The cart is connected via a string passing over a massless frictionless pulley to a hanging mass. Once I let this system go, the hanging mass is going to drop, and that's going to cause the cart to accelerate. And we're going to look at three different things about this system. One, let me remind you that we looked at this system in lab five, no, lab six, force and acceleration. Remember, from this system, you used Newton's laws to predict the acceleration. Once you had the acceleration, you predicted how long it would take to travel a known distance. So first part of this lab is we're just going to review. I'm gonna give you the mass of the cart, the hanging mass, and you're gonna calculate what is the acceleration of the system, what is the tension in the string, and then we're gonna compare that to the values that we actually get from capstone. So that first part is a review. Second two parts, we're basically gonna be looking at energy and seeing whether or not energy is conserved and whether or not the work done by all external forces equals the change in energy of the system. So for that part, first thing we're going to do is look at it two different ways. First way, we're going to consider our system to be just the cart. Just the cart, which means all the forces acting on this cart are now external forces. What forces do we have acting on this cart? Well, I've got three if I could ignore air resistance and friction. I've got gravity pulling it straight down, I've got the normal force pushing straight up, and I have tension acting horizontally. As I let this cart go, the displacement is horizontally. Well, since gravity is acting straight down and the displacement is horizontal, gravity is not doing any work on this cart. Since the normal force acts straight up and the displacement is horizontal, the normal force doesn't do any work. So the only force that's doing work is the tension in the string. And so the work done by all external forces should equal the change in energy of the system. Our system is just the cart. The only form of energy that's changing in the cart, if I ignore air resistance and friction, would be the kinetic energy of the cart. So if I can calculate the total work done by tension, in theory, that should equal the change in energy of the cart and since the cart's only form of energy that's changing is kinetic, and it starts from rest, the total work done on this cart should equal the final kinetic energy of the cart. That's one way we're going to analyze the system, just defining the system as the cart. <coughs> Second way, now we're going to do the exact same experiment, but now I'm going to define my system as the cart plus the hanging mass plus the earth plus the string. So now my new definition of the system is the cart, the hanging mass, the earth. Now if I include the earth as part of my system, then I can start looking at gravitational potential energy. If that's the case, <coughs> the only external force is acting on the system, which is the cart, plus the hanging mass, plus the string, plus the earth. The only external forces then would be the normal force acting on the cart and since the normal force is not doing any work, the work done by all external forces is zero, which means the change in energy of the system should be zero. So right now, before I release it, the cart is at rest, the hanging mass is at rest. It's a little hard to see, but the hanging mass is in an elevated position. Uh, let me see if I can. Oh, there we go. So the hanging mass is in an elevated position, so the hanging mass has gravitational potential energy, mgy initial. Then I let it go, and what happens is the mass is decreasing in elevation. So the potential energy of the mass is decreasing, but the cart is increasing its speed, and so is the hanging mass. So right now, before I release this thing from rest, the only form of energy in the system and again, the system is the cart, plus the hanging mass, plus the string, plus the earth. The only form of energy is the gravitational potential energy of the hanging mass. 
Now, I'm going to define my y equals zero for the cart at the elevation it's at right now. So as this cart is moving, it's not changing its elevation, so its gravitational potential energy is not changing. And I can define a different y equals zero for different objects. So for the cart, I'm going to define my y equals zero at the elevation of the cart. For the hanging mass, I'm going to define my y equals zero at the ground level. So right now, the only form of energy in the system is the gravitational potential energy of the hanging mass. Then I let it go, and right when the mass hits the ground, now it doesn't have any more gravitational potential energy, but the mass is moving, the cart is moving, now the system has kinetic energy. And since both things are moving, the hanging mass and the cart, I have to look at the kinetic energy of both. So the second way we're going to look at this system is, does the initial gravitational potential energy of the hanging mass, mgy, does that equal the final kinetic energy of the system, which is the kinetic energy of the cart plus the kinetic energy of the moving mass? And that's basically what we're going to do. So three different things for this lab. One, given the known mass of the cart and the hanging mass, what is the theoretical acceleration from Newton's second law? What is the theoretical tension? And we're just going to compare that for one experiment. Then I'm going to do this experiment 10 times. And for those 10 trials, we're going to analyze it two different ways. One, looking at our system being just the cart. Does the work done on the cart by tension equal the change in energy of the cart? Second way we're going to look at this is now we're going to define our system as the cart plus the earth plus the hanging mass, plus the string, in which case the only external force is the normal force in the cart, but that's not doing any work. So the total work done on the system is zero, which means the energy of the system should not change. So initially, the energy is just gravitational potential energy of the hanging mass, and then at the end, I've got both the mass and the cart moving. They both have kinetic energy. So what we're going to do is compare the initial energy of the system, which is just gravitational potential energy of the hanging mass, to the final kinetic energy of the system, which is both cart and the mass moving. So that's sort of the setup. And now what I'm going to do is actually run the experiment, do it 10 times, give you the values that you need. And then I'll make another video just going through the introduction, the setup, and how to do the actual write-up. That's it for now. Okay, so now let's actually do the experiment and take the data for this lab. So again, I'm going to run this experiment 10 different times, and then we're going to analyze the data two different ways. One, we're going to treat our system as just the cart, in which case tension is doing work on the system as an external force, which changes the overall energy of the system. And if we're ignoring air resistance and friction, it's just the kinetic energy of this cart changing. So I let this go, tension does work on it, changing the energy of the system, which for the cart is just the kinetic energy. Then we're gonna do the exact same trials, but now we're going to analyze it a different way. Now we're going to include as our system the cart, the hanging mass, the earth, and the string. Since the earth is now part of our system, we can use gravitational potential energy. And let me just give you a few numbers. One. The mass of the cart is 252 grams. The hanging mass is 25 grams. So 25 grams hanging off the end, connected to a mass which has, or connected to a cart which has a mass of 252 grams. This right here is the position of the cart when the mass is hitting the ground. That means that at this point here, that's when the tension basically goes to zero because the hanging mass hits the ground. I'm always going to release the cart from the exact same position here, which means the total distance over which tension is acting is this distance from here to here, which I'm just going to tell you is 65 centimeters. What that means is when I'm analyzing this, where I'm looking at the system being only the cart, tension 
is acting over a total distance of 65 centimeters. So we're going to get from capstone what the tension is, and then we're going to use that to calculate the work done by tension and see if that equals the change in kinetic energy. Second part, this mass is at an elevation of 65 centimeters above the floor. So its gravitational potential energy is going to be mgy, where y is 65 centimeters, but you have to put that in meters. The mass is 25 grams, but you have to put that in kilograms. Then when I let it go, now what ends up happening is the hanging mass goes from 65 centimeters to zero. So all the potential energy it has is gone, but that has gotten converted into kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the moving cart and the kinetic energy of the moving mass, you have to look at both of them. So let's actually just do this experiment. Ten, let's do our 10 different trials. So again, I'm always starting it at the same point. The mass is the cart moving a total distance of 65 centimeters. Here we go. Trial one. Trial two. So hopefully that is it for the data taking, and now we're going to just look at the data in a little bit of detail, and then I will post what the 10 different final speeds were so that you have all the data. All right. Let me... Okay, so now that I've done all 10 trials, let's just take a quick look at the results of one of the trials, and then I'll give you the final speeds for all different. 10 different trials so you can analyze the data. So this is the velocity versus time plot for the moving cart after I released the hanging mass from rest. And over on this side, what we have is a plot of force versus position. Basically the tension in the string versus position. So a couple things we can get from this data. One, this is a plot of velocity versus time which means if I take the slope of this, that should give me the acceleration of the system. So what I done, did is just highlighted an area here. I'm going to fit it to a straight line. So basically I'm fitting it to y equals mx plus b, which means the slope of that line is the acceleration, right? The slope of the line is just the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So for this particular run, the slope is 0 0.790 meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration for this particular run. Now what I'm gonna do is give you the acceleration, the average acceleration of all 10 different trials. And I'm gonna ask you to compare that to the theoretical acceleration. So we know that, well, you've solved this system before, but the acceleration of A cart on a frictionless horizontal plane connected to a hanging mass. We saw this before, but the acceleration is m1g divided by m1 plus m2. So I'm going to have you do is compare the theoretical acceleration that you get from Newton's second law to the average acceleration of all 10 trials. I will give you that in a little bit. And then the second thing we looked at is so this is a plot of the tension of the string versus position. Two things we're going to get from this. One, you can kind of see that the tension was acting over a distance of 65 centimeters. So that's the displacement over which tension is acting. And what I did here is I just took the average value of the tension over this 65 centimeters, which you can see is 0.19 newtons. So again, I will give you the average tension 
for all 10 trials, and you're going to compare that to the theoretical tension you get by solving Newton's second law given the known masses. Again, the mass of the cart, 252 grams. The mass of the hanging mass off the end is 25 grams. So what I'm going to do is just summarize three things. One, what is the average acceleration of this system for all 10 trials? You're going to compare that to the theoretical. Two, what is the average tension over all 10 trials? You're going to compare that to the theoretical. And then I'm going to give you the final speed of the cart over all 10 trials. So you're going to have one value for the acceleration, which is the average value, one value for the tension, which is the average value, and then I'm going to give you all 10 final speeds. All right, that is it for the sort of lab pout run. And I'm going to give you all the data, and then I'm going to make one more video that I'll post before this one which is just sort of an introduction and then exactly what you need to do for the informal report. Okay, so here is the results of the 10 different trials. What we have is the average acceleration of the cart over 10 trials, 0 0.805 meters per second squared. The average tension over 10 trials is 0.194 Newtons. And I've listed the final speeds of all 10 trials. Now this is the final speed of the cart right before it's, well, right after it's been accelerated by the hanging mass. But since the mass and the cart are connected, this is also the final speed of the hanging mass.